What is going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is finally time to jump back on this camper trailer. I want to get this thing smashed out so we can move on to some bigger and better projects. So as you guys may have seen, or if you haven't, jump over and um, have a watch. I took this thing out a couple of weeks ago for a test. As you can see, it's all packed, still full. Um, so it was great to get out and uh, actually use this thing for what it's made for. Um, there's a few little tweaks and stuff I want to do, but today's uh, video is basically going to be part two of the... 12 volt system I've sort of let this thing go and haven't done any work to it I've sort of neglected it lately um, as you can tell it's filthy it needs a good wash and all that and a good paint first thing I want to do is I want to jump into that air compressor get that thing wired and smashed out so we can use it at the moment it's just sort of um, alligator clips on the battery which isn't very good and I want to get those lights rear lights wired and outlets at the top I will be doing little bits of work just here during the week after work when I finish um, I'll try and get this thing done all right so before I jump into it I just want to show you guys um, uh, the other day on a real rush i uh wired up the fridge so i've got a little socket down there screwed on the side as you can see that carpet's actually coming loose a bit i do have to fix that too um but anyway so i wired that fridge up just before we left um and i just want to show you guys with these wacos and angles so this will be your standard cord um so they come with you know your, your normal cigarette lighter plug on there so that goes on there like that so this is how you buy it out of the box from the factory um, so what I just sort of do, so I've actually learnt, is you unplug that um, and then what you can do is you buy this angle style socket, so it's sort of hard for you to see, but you clip it down in there and you screw it in and there's no way for that to come out. So you can't go drive down a corrugation and have um, this plug sort of wobble loose and then your fridge not work for a couple of hours all the way down in the camper and you know you get there and your food's all warm and your beers aren't cold. Yeah, so I just want to show you guys that. So that's a uh, nice neat little mod there and yeah, you'll, you'll never get stuck without the fridge working there. All right, so first thing I'm going to do, um, I'm going to split these jump, sort of jump leads things. Um, this is what's attached to the pump. So that's about, um, I think it's about 8 BNS wire. So that's pretty thick. That's good. Um, these twin thumper pumps run about a maximum of 90 amps, which is really high. So I've actually got a 100 amp relay here. Um, so that's got your, obviously your power in, your, your power out to the pump, and then you've got an earth to um, cut the relay in and just a trigger feed. So that'll, that'll just go up to the one of the switches up there. Um, I've only got two switches left and I've got two fuse blocks left on the fuse box. So one of them will be for this um, air compressor and the other will be for those rear lights and then I'll probably just add some more switches in later. Alright, so I'm just going to earth out of the batteries and then the relay will go onto the positive side of the other battery. So I've mounted that relay up. Um, I've run the trigger wires up and within this um, loom here. And that's coming inside. So I've earthed the relay to that little bolt. Ideally, I would have earthed it down in the battery, but I didn't want too many connections down there, and it's only a three mil wire. Um, so what I've done here, all of our switches have been used except for the two M ones. So um, the second last one, I've jumped power because this one here will be for the spotlights on the rear. I've jumped power off that one. Um, they are both only going to trigger relays, but I, I have run some thickish wire. Um, and yes, that is showing a bit of copy there. It is annoying me a little bit, but I didn't want to put a yellow crimp so it wouldn't look right. Um, but I will fix that in the future. So I have to whack a fuse inside um, and that'll do both these switches. And that'll give me another fuse to do um, the light bar. So I'm going to have the, the work lights off the top fuse and the light bar off another fuse. Um, and that'll be pretty much about it off that fuse box. Um, the fridge has got its own fuse. So it's not running off this because, you know, this cable's only uh, 8 BNS. Um, yeah, so I'll crimp this on here and we'll be able to plug it and hopefully turn it on. So just another cool little thing about this fuse box is it's got the little LED. So it lets you know if there's a fuse out. So when I flick that on there, it's drawing back through the earth. So to let me know that that fuse is actually blown or, you know, uh, missing. So if we plug this one in, I just realized the override switch on the compressor there was turned off. So, so that's pretty handy to have. Um, and the radio's coming on because I haven't bolted on the earth. It's all drawing back through there, but that's all right. So I'll leave that out for now because I'll have to run all the other lights. Um, and just want to 
mentioned to you guys um, a future plans with the travel buddy and all that I will have to um, cut some back cut that cupboard back a little bit I did look into one I got a buddy with one and measured it all up and it's just too small and the funds aren't that great at the moment so trying to do this thing um, not only on a budget so everyone else can do it but you know travel buddy I know it's only a couple hundred bucks but I can't really afford to um, put that into this when I when um, I'm sort of doing the buggy as well at the moment. So hopefully in the future I will be doing that, but I do want to get this trailer painted because it is sitting out in the weather, um, sort of going to waste and it's sort of rusting away. So I want to try and get that painted and all that. So if you guys have had um, any experience with the Raptor liner, I've been thinking about that. Maybe Raptor liner this whole thing, it'd look pretty cool. Or just do we go back to the hammer tone or paint it black or something. So let me know your thoughts down below guys. But um, I think the next thing we'll do is we'll start wiring those rear lights. All right, so the next thing to do um, is to wire up these rear lights. Now, I have thought long and hard about this. So I did want those two little um, spotlights to be separate from the little light bar because I wasn't sure what that light bar is going to be like. Um, but the big plan uh, actually is I've got the roof rack off my 60 series. I pulled that off. I got sick of it, never used it. So I pulled that off with the awning. I'm actually going to sit that on top of here and then sit the tent on top. So that um, roof rack will probably come out a little bit further, so I'll, I'll um, be able to adjust these lights a bit more, being bolted on the side there. So I may not need this light bar in the end, but for now I'm just going to put them all off the same switch. And then later on I can always isolate this with a, um, a switch outside, just for when you're cooking with a barbecue. And I did notice um, it was, there was not enough light at the back here. So yeah, we'll jump into that. Um, we'll just wire up inside and use that last remaining switch. Alright, so first of all, I'm going to run this 6mm uh, cable, so I've got that. I'm going to run that um, out through the grommet at the back that I drilled um, many, many videos ago and put that light bar on with. I'm going to poke the wire out there. Um, this will all be split tubed. Now we'll tie it up the top like I have done with the other wire. Um, I'll have to feed it through this drooping wire here. I'll have to fix that as well. And um, I'll run into that compartment there and we'll uh, put a relay up under there. All right, so I've got this wire run out, outside here. Um, I've bared it back there, so I'll wire this light onto there, and then I'll tap the other two into the other side. Um, now these uh, little lights, they draw about 1.4 uh, amps each. So that's three amps all up. Um, this light bar, I believe, is about two amps. So it's roughly about five amps all up. Um, so that should be enough. I've gonna have, uh, obviously, six mil cable running all this, and it's gonna be a 50 amp relay, um, and it'll be fused at probably 20 amps anyway. So that should be plenty, um, and as I say, I will probably be isolating this once I put that roof rack on top. guys um, I've got that all wired up now I've got the Deutsch plugs connected at the top the cable tied down going down um, it was a pretty tight fit and I've wired up the light bar through there I love using this cloth tape stuff it just makes things a lot easier I did buy a roll from work and it goes really far it's actually was it Tessa brand I think I've seen goon squad boys using it so it must be American I'd say but um it's really good stuff so yeah, and it just finishes it off. I don't know how waterproof it is, but we'll uh, put that to the test. I did use some on the trailer plug on the front, and it's worked. It's held uh, held up fine, actually. Man, I just had a little bit of that T-Rex around the grommet there, so that should seal it up inside. So now, I'm just going to have to run that wire up and around. That's all dodgy. I need to uh, get some proper P-clips in there. And we'll mount the relay up inside that cabinet. We'll have to earth the lights probably to the trailer itself. Now, I know you're supposed to earth the lights straight to the battery, but um, most times you can get away with it, putting it to the body on there, like an earth strap or something. So that should work fine. So we'll hook that up and then we'll jump onto these outlets. All right, so I've got the wire around from inside. I've P-clipped it up underneath. I got sick and tired of trying to glue that up there. For some reason, it wouldn't hold. Um, so in the cabinet, which you guys won't be able to see, um, I do have to uh, P-clip that up a little bit, but I'll have to take the sidewall off um, and do all that later, so that's alright. So next thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to screw the relay up under here, and I'll be able to bolt the, um, the earth for the lights onto that, relays earth onto that, and then I'll just have my trigger feed down here, 
and I'll have pick up my power from this last um, last fuse here. So now I have that all wired up. Um, as you did see, I um, sanded the earth for that relay as well, because that's obviously what the lights are going on to, so it's all bare metal on that section. Um, obviously no water's gonna get in. So I'll flick these on, so that works there. All right, so I'm gonna add these uh, outlets to the top. So I'm just gonna tap off the outlets here, because um, I always leave those on when we're sleeping anyway, so that, that'll give it power to upstairs. So what I'm gonna use is a bit of 4mm cable. I'm gonna run it straight up. It's already fused and everything through here. Um, and on the outside, I'm going to run this male and female plug. So the tent plug, you'll poke out the side and plug it in, and it'll just go straight in. I could use an Anderson plug or something, but I'd have to use a waterproof uh, bracket and all that, uh, dust cover and stuff. And I just don't know how that rack's going to go on there yet, so this is the best solution for now. I can always upgrade it later. Um, luckily, when I actually mounted the antenna, I didn't show you guys, but I drilled a hole in the wrong spot. So I'll try and run the wire up through there. I didn't want to drill any more holes in this trailer. Um, it is all watertight but I think I'll run it up through there. Um, I could possibly just tuck out the side like I have been doing in that um, last trip that we did, but it's sort of inconvenient when you want to shut the door and that, and if it's covered in split tube, it won't close. So I'll run it up through that hole, um, seal it all up, and we'll just see how it goes. I'll have to cable tie it up underneath. Um, I don't have time in um, today's video to put the outlets up the top, but I will fold it out and you know whack all that together and that'll run our um, light strip up top too, so that'll be good. Alright guys, so I've got all that back together. Um, I've got the cable run out the roof. I've just got to run a little bit of the silicon on the top there to seal it. Slide this tubing uh, over the top and I'll put this little plug on here. Now I'll just cable tie that underneath the tent for now so it doesn't get water inside. As you can probably see, I've got a little bit of yellow light on. Sorry if you hear the noise there. Um, it is getting really dark here, so um, it's getting quite late as well. So I'll just try and um, finish this up and that's probably going to be all for today. So with this plug here, um, I've just got little push-in terminals. So they just got a little tab on the back and it's probably quite hard to see. But um, So that just locks inside. Um, I am using the female side so that the pins don't stick out up the top. Um, so that'll be the live side so when you plug it together it should be fine. And when it's hit, um, sort of vibrating around and stuff. So all I do with these is I crimp these over a little bit. You can get fancy crimpers but I just use these. So you crimp that over, so a little bit on the on the copper there, and then crimp it over onto the insulation there. Do the same with the other one. Alright, now they could just slide off, so what I like to do is just heat them up a little bit with this blowtorch and just dab a little bit of solder on there. Not too much or they won't fit. If you get the temperature right, it should just draw it straight in. And you've got to watch, you've got to try and keep these terminals up because that back uh, little spike sticking out that locks in, if that gets solder in there, you're buggered. Um, they won't actually stay in then or slide in at all. All right, so just a little close up there. That's that little tab. I know it won't focus. Oh, there we go. So there's that little tab on the back there. So that's the one you don't want to get solder into. Um, or otherwise, you won't get it in the plug. So yeah, well, now what I'll do is I'll slide those into this um, plug here. And as you can see, the top and the bottom one have got both got grooves they point away from each other so that's where your little uh, your little tag will slide into and hold that in position alrighty guys so that's all wired up that's done so we've got the compressor done the rear lights done and um, the roof outlet done so I'm just gonna leave that hanging here for the night just while that dries and then I'll uh, just cable tie it all up so that's all right but um, that's gonna be a wrap for today's video guys uh, it is getting quite late on me here so I think that's gonna be all I can squeeze into the video today it's great to get back on this camper and get more done uh, let me know what you guys reckon we should paint this thing. I have asked a couple of times and just a few things, but I definitely want to know your thoughts down below. Leave them in the comments section. 
Uh, so, I, I don't know, like a Raptor liner would be great because this thing would just be so durable then you could run it down anything and scrape into stuff and it would all be fine. Um, wouldn't get any of that sort of pitting rust either. So yeah, this thing's been sitting out in the weather since I've had it. Um, I've used it sort of as a bench on the draw bar, so I've had some grinding sparks and that just sort of hit it. So I want to put something really nice on this so that it can just uh, sit outside and not go to waste. But yeah, let me know what your thoughts are down below, guys. Um, what else should I do to this thing? I'm pretty much, I'm nearly done, so I'm going to add solar. Um, and those outlets, are, they'll be, I'll be getting those done soon. Um, just a couple of other little things. I do want to put a BCDC inside, so probably just a red arc, so that we can charge while we're driving. So I probably only need maybe a 20 amp charger. Um, I do have the two batteries there, maybe 40 amp, I'm not sure. But the solar, I'll have uh, its own regulator anyway. So, I, you know, sort of with those BCDCs, it's good to have um, solar input if you've got it on top of the van while you're driving along. But for something like this where I can't really squeeze solar in anywhere, except for on the doors maybe, um, I sort of, I don't really need that option other than um, run it through the charger if I was set up anyway. So, and another thing I do want to add is uh, just an Anderson plug on the outside so that when I'm pulled up at home, I can just whack the charger straight in without open, opening up the camper, um, having to take off the battery lids and all that sort of stuff. Um, I just want to mention someone left a comment saying how I should use an LED driver for these um, LED strips. Now, when I bought them on the website, they, they didn't say about a driver or anything. Um, I've always just ran them straight on the battery and they've lasted for years. So I'm not too sure what your thoughts are on that guys. Let me know down below if you, if you guys have done the same sort of thing or ran a driver or anything. I'm open to any suggestions. I'm all I'm learning here so this is all just a big learning thing for me and um, take you guys along and show you guys how I'm doing it and maybe you guys can learn something from it. But yeah, that's going to be a wrap for today's video guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you guys for all the love and support. Um, drop your comments and thoughts down below. Um, jump over to Instagram for an inside scoop before YouTube and smash that subscribe button. Make sure you turn your notification bell on so you don't miss out on anything. I'll see you guys in the next one.